Greetings from the Faith Temple Evangelistic Church of Jesus Christ, where Bishop James J. Bradley Sr. is our pastor. We are located at 4176 Old Dixie Highway in Gifford, Florida. Our Sunday school service begins at 9.45 a.m. Our morning worship begins at 11 a.m. On the first Tuesday of every month, we have our Bible study from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. We encourage you to fast and pray with us every Wednesday in our corporate fasting. If you have any questions, you can visit our website where you can find our phone number, email, and our Facebook information.
You know, sometimes I don't think right. You know, sometimes I don't, I might like cool too fast and they acknowledge him. Amen. Then I found out that I didn't acknowledge him. I lost uh, about a thousand dollar worth of checks about a week or two ago. Misplaced them. And I looked 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 for them. More checks that came in from the man that originally gave me checks. And I'm like, I know this man gave me some checks and I got them checks somewhere. But I went to the Lord in prayer and I said, Lord, I need to find these checks. <laughs> I want to put this money in the bank. <laughs> I need you to help me to find these checks instead of just looking at myself. So I done went out to the truck different times. I done looked in this truck. I done looked in that truck. I done looked in the house. I done looked everywhere. And can't find them checks. Find them. The Lord just showed me. I put them in a different envelope. That's why I didn't recognize where the checks was. In my bag all the time. But in a different envelope. Because I looked through that bag. I went through everything. The envelope and everything. I looked and I looked and I looked. Finally I said, Lord, I need to find this thing now. <laughs> it ain't playing. It ain't playing now. <laughs> it ain't funny no more. I need to find this thing. And the Lord came through. But at my, you know, when say what well, says this, a man's extremity is what? God's opportunity. If you return with me to Joshua. Turn with me to Joshua. I want to read a little bit out of two chapters and see. Well, we, I know I want to do a little bit out of chapter 9. Chapter 9 and uh, verse 14 of Joshua. Chapter 9 and verse 14. Joshua. I want you to kind of go along with me a little bit. And I want you to go back and read because see I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm, Lord willing, I'm going to give you some highlights of this thing so you can understand it. But I want you to go and read these, 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 these stories for yourself. Because it's important to acknowledge the Lord in everything that you do. That's one of the reasons why I don't go get it true enough. But one of the main things is I'm acknowledging God in whatever I do. I got 36 acres in Georgia I want to sell. I'm acknowledging God in what way to go. I told a friend I'll let him have it for $36,000. He half stepped and I said, man, I can put this thing on Facebook for $100,000 and the might goes by overnight. He's waiting on my end of the day now. He won't come on. So between friendship I'm stuck with it for a little minute. I've been waiting on you for three weeks now. I guarantee you, if I put this on Facebook, when I leave out of church today, by the time the end of the night comes, I'm going to have a bunch of calls. I'm in. 36 acres. I need 36 times. <laughs> I know you would. And I was doing that for him. I said, I can put it up for 100,000 on Facebook, and I'm going to get 100 calls in the next day or two. So I got to acknowledge the Lord. You know, it's like between you don't want to make an enemy, but still, I'm waiting on you. You told me any day, you ain't gave me nothing definite. I want to be done with it. Get it, get it out of the way. I'm trying to downsize a few things. But in everything I do, I try to acknowledge the Lord. So things turn out all right. If you have it with, if you have it, say amen. Okay. Can you read that with me? Let's go. And the men, everybody got it? Read it loud with me. And the men, okay. And answer not out of the mouth of the Lord. Of the of the Lord. You notice that? What do you say? They did what? So, we find that Joshua took over after Moses, taking the people into the promised land. 
Y'all ready to go over into uh, Jericho? They already sent the spies in, the spies and spies out of the land, came back and reported how it was and everything. Rahab had to get the spies. The Lord dried up the Jordan River. They went across over into Jericho. Got in there and the people had the city locked up. Why did they have the city locked up? Because they had heard how the God of Israel had fought for them coming out of Egypt. Heard how he had done all this right out of the Red Sea. So they knew that the, 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 the Jordan River wasn't nothing. If he dried up the Red Sea for them, they knew that the, the, the Jordan River wasn't nothing for him to dry up. See, at least they understood that even though they were heathens, even though they were Gentiles, not knowing God personally, they understood that this God that fought for Israel was a powerful God. Amen. Come and sit and tell you that, don't If an individual is going out and he's being successful, doesn't matter what color he is, but whatever he tends to do, he's a successful, that's just a what? A successful individual, right? You should go to him, that individual and do what? Get some advice from him. Because something about it, him or her, is uh, they're successful in what they do. So whatever God did for his people, it was coming through. Even though all the rest of the world didn't even know this God, but they knew all of his works. They knew what he could do. He fought for them. Not only that, he delivered them with all those plagues in Egypt. And then he fought the kings a couple of kings on the way. And Israel was uh, the winner every time. And now they're here, getting ready to cross over to Jericho. They go in, and we know the story how they marched around six days and didn't do nothing but just march around. And the seventh day, they marched around seven times and did what God told them to do. The walls came tumbling down, and they utterly did what? destroyed everybody except Rahab the harlot and her family because she hid the spies and she requested that they remember her when they get there. She didn't say if y'all get here. She said what? When, when y'all get here. I know God will deliver uh, and so I want y'all to remember me and my family when y'all get here. Can you say you got that kind of confidence in your God? Huh? Here is Gentile woman having that kind of a confidence in the God of Israel. Knowing when y'all get here, please remember me and my family. They say, okay, try to rip now and have your family at that house. That way we'll give instructions not to touch you. Because they went in and they utterly destroyed. But they were not supposed to take anything. Because see, when you go in war, you're supposed to take the spoils of war. If they go over there and defeat Israel now, and they're supposed to take all, all and everything. So that's why they have Y'all know that? Hmm? Y'all know why? So that's why they have That man loaded with oil. They loaded with oil. And buddy, you know what? What you know what how important oil is every time you get your electric bill. Because it takes that oil to move that thing to make that electricity and send it to your house. You know every time you pull up to the gas pumps that that oil is important. That is the thing kind of almost that rules the world is that oil. And that's why they keep on running and eventually when the invasion comes that's probably what it's going to be over is oil. The invasion, invasion that they, they're talking about in Revelation, when all the nations go up against him, it's going to be probably in vain because of all the oil that, that, that they gave in them. Jacob distributed it out, the blessings to his son when he was laying on his dying bed. Told him all the land that they were going to get, the possession that, that was going to belong to them. And all that has the land, when his land would flow up in the plain. Y'all know what y'all know what crude oil looks like when you pump it up? No, it looks like honey. 
It's the land of plenty. So they had crossed over. They fought them and they had defeated them. Now they were getting ready to go and fight off. See, the promised land was called the promised land because it was promised to Abraham a long time ago when he was in the land of the Chaldeans. He said, Abraham, come out, Abram, come out from amongst them and go to a land which I will show you. And I'm going to give it to you for an inheritance. So it was there. Abraham went from city to city, set up a tent. He was a nomad. He was a Roman. He was there. He didn't, even though he didn't actually inherit it for himself, but his seed was going to inherit it. Then the promise was passed on from Abraham to who? Isaac. And the promise said this. This is going to be your land. The promise was passed on from Isaac to who? Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to what? Israel. And his 12 sons was called what? The 12 tribes of Israel, which called the children of Israel, which is also called the Son of God. So they were there, and they had gone uh, uh, over into Jericho. They were victorious. And now the instructions is to go in and utterly to destroy every nation that is in the promised land. Now, just before Abraham died, he made out a sacrifice there, and he walked up and down between the sacrifice. That's how they did. They cut him in half and laid him on that, and that's how they made covenants. They walked up and down like a hallway. A man walked up and down between them, and he made an agreement between them. So this is what Abraham done. He, he, he had laid the meat out there and he had to chase the buzzers off but they kept trying to come down and he, he walked up and down and then God put him in a trance and showed him what was going to happen. He said, you'll see he's going to go in the land for 400 years and they're going to be put in slavery but I'm going to judge that nation when it's all over. We know that land to be what? What land was that? That land was Egypt. He said, you were going down into that land he told him that because Abraham wanted to know. Have you ever wondered what's going to become of your children? Let me see the hands of you that have wondered that. Yes, I wonder what's going to become of my seed. That's what Abraham wanted. No different than what you want to know. And so God showed them. They're going to go down into a land that's not their home. And they're going to be down there 400 years. Say 400, but we know 437 years total. And they came out. Because God said, then I'm going to deliver them. But at that time, which was 400 years earlier, he said that the iniquities of the Canaanites was not yet full. They're doing some sin and stuff. They're stinking in my nostrils, but it hadn't got full. Don't y'all know that the sins of the United States are starting to get full in the nostrils of God? How many know that? The stink in God's nostrils that coming from the United States is starting to get full. See, they, they were cutting the fool and they were doing things because they knew not God. Who you had? The Hivites, the Jezebites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, all of them lived in there. They were living in the land of promise. But God had promised it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their seed. So that means when they, when his when his children got to come, now what had to happen to everybody else? Gotta go. Gotta go, buddy. Gotta go. And God sent him in, and he didn't say go in there and play with him and shake their hand and make covenants with him. He said go in there and do what? Utterly do what? Destroy. destroy. Every last one of them utterly destroy. God said that? Yes, he did. Read for yourself. Go in and utterly destroy. Bat, rat, cat. Man, woman, boy, girl, baby. Utterly destroy. Don't keep nothing but the gold and the silver. So when they went in Jericho, they utterly destroyed, except for Rahab the harlot and her family. After Jericho, they came up against the city Ai. 
Little city. So they do what people do now. You do what? You send spies in. Check it out. See if it's actually so. Huh? I'm going to go out and see. So he sent spies. Joshua sent our spies. They go in and spy the land out. And they come back. And they tell him, look at him, uh, Joshua. That's a little city, man. Ain't that many people in that city. No, 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 don't, don't take all the soldiers and go down. They don't need but two or three thousand. Reading that, said, I'm paraphrasing, but they'll tell you, you don't need but two or three thousand. You don't need but two or three thousand. Send them down there, and we can take over. I mean, I mean, we look at, look at, they're looking at past. We'll send the two or three thousand down there. And that'll do it. Uh, being that he probably sent a bunch of spies and they probably all came back and said the same thing, it sounded sensible. Wouldn't that sound sensible? Everybody coming back and saying the same thing? Everybody would say the same thing. So it seemed like you ought to jump up. But what this up tonight today is? The what? What's the subject today? Come on. What's the subject? No, no, no. This subject. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. This everything is going back to this subject. Don't lean to what? Your own understanding. Don't even lean to what you see. Don't even lean to what you hear. But do what? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. His own understanding was that we don't need that many men to go down there and fight this battle. And so, they did. They sent 3,000 men down there. They got down there. And got what happened to put them and turn around and run back with their tail tucked between the legs. Why did this happen? Talk to me. They did not acknowledge the Lord. They did not acknowledge the Lord. That is why this happened to them. One of the reasons, anyway. A lot of things we want to do, we need to do what? First, acknowledge the Lord. So when he came back, crying and moaning, Joshua turned away and fell, his face all down on the ground. Now he, now he want to talk to God now. He want to talk to God now. Every time something come up on us, then we're going to do what? We're going to want to talk to God now, right? We didn't talk to him before. I'm going to go out there and do this myself. And when the what's happening get put on us, now we want to call out to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord what have I done? Then you don't want to put the blame on. You done bought us through Jordan and bought us over here. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Lord told you to get up off the face. Get up, Joshua. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Get up. Let me talk to you. Sin in the camp. How many of you know that when one person sin, it doesn't just affect one person? Yes. A lot of people say, I'm going to do this. It ain't no man but me, ain't but me. Don't you know sin don't affect just one person? Yes. When you sin, it does not just affect you, but it affects everybody in the concern around you. One man, you read the word, and, just, and the Lord tells him there is sin in the camp. Sin in the camp? Israel has sin. Israel has sin? Ain't but one man sin. But the Lord said what? Israel has sinned. Go back and read. Like I said, I want you to read all this for yourself. Israel has sinned. That's why you can't go around talking about, oh, it's just me and what I do is just going to only affect me. No. If you're involved in the church, guess what? It affects the church. If you got a family, then what? It affects the family. It might affect, uh, affect your, in, the, the employees around you. It affects everybody. 
So when you go to sin, you go to think about this thing. Who is this going to affect? If, if people would take the time to think about that, they would do a lot less sinning, especially people in the church. Amen. You ought to be refraining from sin. Take time and think about what sin you are about to do and refrain from that. Amen. Who is this going to affect? So what Achan did, it affected the whole camp. Got 36 men out there killed. So Joshua had to go to fire. Now what is he saying that? And we know the story how he went through. And he found him. He found him sitting in the camp. And they put him to death. Him and his family put to death because of the sin. There were two bad things that he had done. He had kept with the gold. And he kept, I think it was a Babylonian garment. It was a beautiful garment. First of all, the Lord wanted to destroy everything. He didn't want you, he didn't want, he didn't, he, some people say, uh, what I wear doesn't matter to God. Have anybody heard that? Yeah. Don't you know what you wear does matter to God? Yeah. It does matter to God how you dress. There are some things God do not want. If there are question about it, you need to question God about it. And leave it alone. So because of that garment, and because of the gold. None of that, they was not supposed to touch any of them. First, after the first battle, because why? That was God's 10%. That was God's tithe. Not only that, the garment was something that should have been burned up. Because everything else he wanted to burn up. He didn't want, he didn't, he wanted to burn the remembrance from the, even their minds if he possibly could. You know how you see images? And in your mind retain images? He wanted all that mess burn up before anybody inherited. They, they were, they were, they were, you know how people write graffiti on the wall? Things just not started that. They were carving graffiti on the wall. He didn't want none of that mess from them. He wanted all burned up and all gone. And so they didn't check with the Lord before they went out and this happened. And then now Joshua getting it straight. And the Lord then comes in and confirmed. Now I'll go up to Ai. And then he told them how to go in there. Not only did he say go up and you're going to win, he told them how to do it. You know, because you don't get about 30,000 men, y'all hang out there and wait out there, send a few men in. Then when you take turn to run, when they take turn to run, throw them out of there, like you sit on fire and then you kill them all. You know, I had to think about that when I was reading on that. You know what? I believe City Bull know this story. Y'all know who City Bull is? Let me see the hands of you who know City Bull, who City Bull is. That's so we got two people who know. City Bull was the one who got General George Armstrong custom. Now Crazy Horse also was a chief. See, I used to read all the books. I did a lot of reading. Crazy Horse was, he kind of grew up, so he probably was privileged to reading the Bible. Because he grew up, he, he had the white man, he was in the white man camp, and they taught him stuff. They would try to teach him. And the first thing they said we were going to do, we're going to teach them, we want to try and take them heathens to, to Christianity. So the first thing they tried to teach them was the Bible. So sitting bull, I mean, Crazy Horse probably had heard this story. But when he left, Crazy Horse had got bite with sitting bull and was able to tell all of them in their language concerning the word of God. So that was a good chance sitting bull had heard this story in the Bible. Because he sure knows sucker cost a big time. In the battle of, what is that, the little big horn? Uh -huh. He tricked them to come out there. And, and when they got out there, the whole Sioux nation was standing around and, and, and put the what's happening on them. When I, when I thought about that, when I read this, what, what the Lord had done here with, 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 with uh, Israel and AI has made me think about the story of City Bull and how they destroyed General Custom out there. God knows how to do all things. 
We think some of the stuff that come along is something new. And what they say, there's nothing what? New under the sun. God knows all things. That's the reason why we need to do what? Acknowledge him in all our ways so that he will direct our path. So the next time they was able to go in, they put the what's happening on it. Now they went in in order to destroy it. Then after this battle, we find that the Gibeonites, people that the inhabitants of Gibeon, Gibeon came, they had heard about how God had delivered his people in the Red Sea, how they came through Jericho, how they hit uh, the, some of them pronounced it OG, King OG, and the, other, and the other king, how they destroyed that nation, how they destroyed Jericho. Hey, uh, so what does it mean for them? It, don't you know, it's hard to keep a rumor down. How many know that? A rumor gets started. That's why people, what they call it, a, a, a smear campaign. People will go out and, 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 and place a lie out there because it's going gonna, it's gonna to spread like wildfire. That's how they cut people down. Y'all know that? All they got to do is go put a lie out there. That's called smearing campaign. And rumors will spread out. Then the truth will also spread out. Now, people don't know heard about this nation coming through here and, and this, this, this strange God that you can't see wiping people out. The first time Indians saw men with guns, all they knew was a stick pointed at them, a thunder came out, and they fell down. You know what they call that thing? A thunder stick. All they know was they pointed at one of us and they thunder, and we died. For a little while, <laughs> they would be well. They didn't know what time it was until they got a hold of rifles. So now we got these people all out there wondering, oh, we gonna, we gonna get destroyed, man. Come. I mean, everywhere them people went, that strange God that they got that they can't see, he wiping everybody out. So we gotta do something. So they dressed up with old clothes, got some old mold bread. They were but three days away, came as an ambassador to Joshua. Got up there and talked to Joshua and the other city. And it wasn't just Joshua by himself. I want y'all to get that point. It was not just Joshua by himself. How many know that leaders got, got hard positions? Huh? Leaders have to make decisions that he has to suffer consequences for after he made them. Because when it don't go right, who going to get the blame? Now when it go right, What's going to happen? Everybody will be <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Are you all right? You all right? Are you, yeah, yeah, man. You all right? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yeah, well, I'll probably be Yes, sir. You all right? You all right? But when it go wrong, it really goes wrong, buddy. It go more wrong than it goes right, then. Because everybody, even when you're doing good, everybody ain't going to give you credit when it's going good. But when it go bad, yeah, <laughs> what you say? <laughs> you're going to know. Especially us. You're going to know. Because we're going to tell you about it. So they came. And they say, we done came from a long, long way off. We started out this morning, this prayer was fresh out of the oven, now it's all molded over. Our shoes were very new, now they're raggedy. Our clothes is all raggedy. And they, they had a believable story. I want y'all to get this now. That's why you always do what? Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. Don't trust in your own understanding. They made it believable. Not only, you know, and then, and then when something don't feel right. See, it didn't feel right. It smelled like something, but they say it didn't smell like something in the milk wasn't clean. <laughs> y'all ain't heard it. Y'all young people ain't heard that one, is it? Something in the milk ain't clean? Well, y'all know that one now, y'all young people. If it seems like something in the milk ain't clean, guess what? They probably something in the milk ain't clean. Write that one down. Write that one down. If it smells like something in the milk ain't clean, it probably something in the milk ain't clean. They even question. Now, now, wait, oh, no, no, no. We, we are your slaves, and we, we come from a long ways off. 
but we heard about your God, how powerful he was. See how, see how they, when, when people butter you up, man, when somebody buttering you up, boy, you better look for it, buddy. Huh? Uh, when, when somebody buttering you up, you better look for it. Don't we know that? Somebody buttering you up, this man, when you land on this, oh, I'm like, oh, here it comes. What you got? What you want? That's how you get a good birthday present. That's how you get a good birthday present. Yeah, sometimes. Yes, sir. They came in and they laid it on thick. And then they had to put, they had to put in there, your God in there. And he done done all that. We done heard about all that your God did. And we are your servant. And we bring in gifts and all this for you to you. Still, you're supposed to do what? Acknowledge the Lord. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't even lean to what you see. Don't even lean to what? what you hear. But do what? Go down to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. No matter what it is, take it to the Lord in prayer. Now I know many, you know, everybody in here probably came up against a situation that looked like it was something else. And you thought it was this way. And then you found out that it wasn't. It was not the way it, you thought it was, did you? How many of them been there? Yeah. I learned that a long time ago. So I learned how to keep my mouth shut, keep my eyes open, keep my ears open, and wait. And wait. That's what we got to learn, saints. That's what we got to learn. How to keep the mouth shut. Because God gave us one of them. Let's keep that shut. Gave us two ears to listen. Two eyes to watch. One mouth to keep it shut and speak when time be spoken. Because a lot of things were judged. Like we were talking in Sunday school this morning. Even Samuel, looking at us, surely this is the one. He's a man of God. Surely, surely this is going to be the one. No, that ain't one. Surely this is the one. You will overlook a thing because of what you think it ought to be. And how you see it ought to be. The wise men came to the palace because why? They figured the baby Jesus was what? Born in the palace. So they came and say, where is he that is what? Born king of the Jews. And he was some seriously wise men. So no matter how we see a thing and how we think a thing, let us always acknowledge the Lord in whatever we do before we get ready to do it. And don't do it just say, I'm not as Lord, then I'm going to go and do it. No. Wait on an answer. And you'll go far. So they didn't go, uh, I think you read the verse with me. Okay, they, what is it? And the men did what? Took not the vision and uh, oh yeah, and, and, and that's not the counsel at the mouth of God. Verse 14 was the one I wanted to take hold to. So after this decision, after hearing all of this, even though they smelled the rat and asked them questions, they had an answer for it. Don't you know when you are going to have a good defense? You're going to already ask yourself the question that other people might ask, and you're going to have an answer for it. How many know that? Hmm? When you were a child, you've done something wrong. If you get home now, how am I going to explain it to the parent? You got you doing the question, and you got an answer. You ask another question, and you got an answer. You ask another question, and you got an answer. So when you come for them, you got an answer for it. When they're, when they're getting ready to go up and try an important case in the court, they come and 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 one of them badgered the witness to a degree. Hit him hard like he's the prosecutor. So he can understand what's going to happen to him tomorrow when you go to court. And this is the answer you need to have coming back. I'm going to do everything to you right now. I want a good lawyer you will do. I'm going to do everything to you right now that the counsel is going to do to you when you get in court tomorrow. Acknowledge the Lord. So after they went on and they, they made a covenant with him. What was wrong about the covenant? What was wrong with 
about making a covenant. Can anybody tell me what was wrong with them making a covenant with, with the Gibeonites? Huh? Why they wasn't supposed to? Be? Say, don't make no covenant with nobody. Because I want you to go in and do what? Utterly destroy what? Everybody. Everybody. That's what was wrong with it. No covenant was supposed to be made with them in, in the promised land. They were supposed to be wiped, slapped out. And here they have now done what? Made a covenant. Not only did they make a covenant, they did what? When they did what? They swear out by what? They swear out by God. Yes. So now they can't touch them. Because if they went in and killed them or anything, then what happened to them? God going to kill them. Because they had already swear out by God. That is the reason why it is so important. Whatever you're going to do is ask God first. No matter what it is, ask God first. No matter what it seems like, what's been presented to you, ask God because God knows it all. I try to express this so much to people. You worry about things that you don't need to worry about because we got a God that knows it all. I tell them that. I'm just human, God. I'm just a man. I got only so much smarts. You know it all. I'm coming to you. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do, God. I'm just human. You just tell me what to do. You lead and I'll follow. That's all it is to it. And that's the way it's going to be. That's how I talk to God. I said, that's the way it's going to be. You tell me, I'm going to follow. And when you learn how to do that, then you will go far. How many know that? Then you're going to go far. But until you learn how to do that, you're going to trip. You're going to cause problems. All kinds of things going to come because you did what? You didn't. You trusted in yourself rather than trusted in God. God is so, like I said, he took a pink when you trust in him like that. He wants you to trust in him. So now we find then that they had gone and after they made this covenant, then three days later they found out these people have a little next door to us. We made this covenant with them that we should not made with them. Now, I want you to, to read something for yourself. Let's see. Was it verse 19? 19. Yeah, we are. All right. See how they, they murmured against him. You don't know how that could be with millions of people around there murmuring against, murmuring against you. Don't tell them what they were talking about doing to him, just like they did. They, they were down there talking about going out, going out to war with the Philistines, going to help the Philistines against the Israelites. In the meanwhile, the, the enemy came through, through Zegalag where he was living, took all of them wives and all, took, took everybody. He had, I think David had well, anyone from 300 to 600 men following him. They came and took their men's wives and their children and everything and gone. And when the men got back home, I think about a three-day journey, by the time they got back home and saw the smoke rise up, the house burned up, family gone. But they were mad as all outdoors. They were mad as all outdoors. And who they want to kill? Like David took all their wives. They were wives that had been took too and they should have been took too. Who they want to kill? The leader. Read it. 
So when there was no one to encourage him, he had to do what? He had to go and encourage himself in the Lord. Lord, look at him. Lord, Lord, Lord. What have I got myself into here now? How many of them have been in that situation? Lord, what have I got myself into? What's what in the world, Lord? I need you. I need your help. What have I got into now? I, I, I told myself I was doing good. And, and how in the world did all this mess come about? Anybody ever been there? How in the world did all the rest of this come about? I didn't even see, I didn't even see this. I just thought myself I was doing good. That's why we need the Lord on our side. For everything we do, we need the Lord on our side. Whenever we make any major decision, even minor decisions, acknowledge the Lord. Live, live a life where you can go to Him. I think some of, them, some of us don't acknowledge Him because we don't live a life where we feel like we can go to Him. I believe I can go to Him for fighting anything because when I catch myself somewhat in error, uh, looking down Errol's lane, I'm going to get on myself and correct myself and tell the Lord, sanctify me, wash me, cleanse me, present me faultless before your presence. Then I'm going to ask him, I need you to do this for me. I need you to take care of this. I, ain't, I don't even feel like it. I'm not in condition. I couldn't do it right if I tried. I need you to take care of it. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. And what? I will repay it. But we have a tendency not to believe those things. We must believe in the Lord. We learn to acknowledge Him in all our ways and let Him direct our path. He came, He suffered, He died so that we can go to Him and pray. So that we can be saved. We don't have to go out. We don't have to get our best lamb, take it in my mouth.
story after story after story how I saw the hand of God just move and do things. Didn't matter what the next man said or what the next man thought, I saw what God was doing for me. Thank you, Lord. That's what you got to see for yourself. Yes, Lord. Regardless. Because God has the last words. Amen. God has the last words. Yes, he got the last words. Yes. You just know that you just talk, you know, uh, 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 what, 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 what did what did David's brother say when he came out there with the food? And he told him, who, what? Say, what? He, he, he did what? He said, what? My God, what? And he was ready to go get it. And his brother was, what did they say? Man, you just came out here. You just come out here for mischief. You just came out here. No matter what they said, David was like, I'll go up there and put what's happening on it. Give me the chance. And the word got to Saul. And he told him what had happened to him. So I said, yeah, yeah, I can see the Spirit of the Lord on you, yeah, you go on right there. Doesn't matter what who else says and sees and what they think, you acknowledge the Lord and let him direct your path. <coughs> who knows if you come to this for such a time as this. You don't know what God will have you to do and what he will use you to do and what he will do for you. Only you know that. Somebody else couldn't see that for you got to take the torch a little forward. Just acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. Let him direct your path. Pray my strength to the Lord.